Hello, and welcome to A Gross of Physics. Today is day 49, and what we're going to do today is to analyze what is known as a half Atwood's machine. Now, George Atwood invented this in 1784 in order to analyze constant motion. With the big five equations, remember, we need to have uniform acceleration. And when we drop objects near the Earth's surface, we have a single acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So what George Atwood decided to do is come up with a device that would allow us to analyze accelerations that were anywhere between 9.8 and 0. And we call this now an Atwood's machine. And basically, it involves a pulley. And what happens is you take two masses and place them on a big pulley, and you cause um, the heavier object to move downward and the lighter mass to move up. And with the two objects, you can determine the acceleration of the system. Now, since we're dealing with only gravitational acceleration, you can't exceed that. So the value has to be somewhere between 0 and 9.8. Now, objects falling at 9.8 meters per second squared, especially back in the late 1700s, were difficult to analyze. They didn't have high-speed video cameras, and they didn't have um, video analysis software. So what he tried to do is have objects fall with a rate that was slower than 9.8 meters per second squared, um, and then can be analyzed a little easier with the timing mechanisms that he had at the, at the time and with the technology that existed. Now, this is still a very useful way for us to analyze motion. So what I'd like to do first is start with a half Atwood's machine, which is where gravity pulls an object downward, and the other mass is resting on a horizontal table. What will happen is the force of gravity down will effectively pull the object that's on the table sideways. Then what we'll look at is a vertical Atwood's machine, a true Atwood's machine, where both masses are vertical. Now when we solve these problems, we're going to have to deal with more than one plane of motion. True, the pulley allows, the, we, allows us to have vertical and horizontal motion at the same time. But the job of a pulley is only to translate the force 90 degrees from the intended direction. So actually, the force downward simulates a sideways force. So what I like to do is use the rotation of the system as our axis. If the rotation is clockwise, we'll call that positive. And if the forces are counterclockwise, we'll call those negative. So as the object falls down, we're going to use down as a positive direction because the pulley's rotation will denote what's positive and what's negative in terms of the forces. So we'll look at a half Atwood's machine today. OK, the Atwood's machine allows us to study acceleration that's a little slower than the 9.8 that we're used to when we drop objects. And it will allow us to actually have accelerations in the laboratory setting or classroom setting that are more manageable. We could time how long it takes an object to move sideways um, if it's accelerating at 2 or 3 meters per second squared, as opposed to 9.8, where we really have less than a second or at the most two seconds within a classroom. Now that being said, the problem is that we now have a pulley involved. And a pulley's job is really just to change the direction of a force. So this is no different than having a problem where the 3 kilogram mass is being pulled sideways by the 8 kilogram block, which is then being pulled by gravity. In this case, the pulley is translating the force 90 degrees. We're able to use the downward force of gravity because it's consistent. And since we have a uniform acceleration, it allows us to study the acceleration truly of this 3 kilogram block. Now, I could redraw it sideways like this. But what I'm going to do is just draw a free body diagram for each um, with the directions involved, and then realize that the rotation of the problem is positive in the clockwise direction. And that will give me clockwise motion as positive, And then anything counterclockwise is going to be negative. Now, there's one force that's common between the two objects, and that's the tension in the rope. These two masses are going to be tied together. And what we're going to have is a situation where, because of Newton's third law, the tension in this part of the rope is going to be equal and opposite to the tension in that part of the rope. So here's how you solve these problems. First, you need to draw a free body diagram. 
And since we have two objects, you're going to draw a free body diagram for both. I have the three kilogram mass. So for the eight kilogram mass, we have the force of gravity going down and the rope is pulling up, so we have the tension in the rope. For the three kilogram mass, we have the force of gravity down. We have the normal force of the table because it's actually in contact with the surface, unlike the eight kilogram mass. We have the tension pulling to the right. And since we're going to deal with an, a simplified version right now, we're going to say there's no friction for this problem. So we'll do an ideal situation with no friction. And what we'll do in a, in a moment after this practice problem, we'll do another practice problem when there's friction involved. And that would be to the left here on the three kilogram mass. We'll use different masses later. Now what we need to do is determine the force of gravity for each. So you have 3 times 9.8, which is 29.4 newtons here. And then 8 times 9.8, which is 78.4 newtons. Now since the normal force is equal and opposite to gravity on the 3 kilogram block, the normal force is 29.4 newtons as well. And there are two things we don't know. We don't know the tension, and we don't know the acceleration. But since we have the, the blocks connected by the string, the tension is the same for both. And since they're moving together, the acceleration is the same for both. So what we'll end up having is two equations and two unknowns. We'll be able to solve for both. Now, let's start with this 8 kilogram mass. I'm going to draw the, free, uh, the equation. I'm going to just say, we'll call this block A and block B. We'll call it the equation B. Now, the way this works is, although gravity is down and negative, the motion of the problem is clockwise, which means the gravitational pull is in the direction of motion. So I'm going to call that positive. The tension opposes it. And then I'm going to set it equal to MA. And since we need to worry about equation B and A, that's why the mass is going to be 8 here and the force of gravity is going to be the 78.4 there. So I'm going to replace those with their actual values right now. 8 kilograms times A. So this is one equation. Now for equation A, we're going to have a similar situation, but the motion is sideways and it's moving to the right which is in this problem with the pulley involved, part of the clockwise direction. So T is your positive value. There's no other forces in the direction of motion, so you just say equals MA. Now, since this is for object A, the mass is actually 3 kilograms. So T equals 3 kilograms times A. And this would be equation A. And what we have is a situation where we could substitute T here in for t on the other equation and then solve for our one unknown which will happen to be the acceleration. So I'm going to rewrite equation B 78.4 newtons minus and I'm going to put all this in here 3 kilograms A and since we've already substituted with units let's just say 3A equals 8A. I'll add the 3 over so I'll get 78.4 newtons equals 11A and I'm going to divide both sides by 11. 78.4 divided by 11 gets me 7.13 meters per second squared. Now that's my acceleration. In order to find the tension, it's 3 times 7.13. And this is kilograms, and this is meters per second squared. And when I multiply that, you should end up with a tension to be 21.4 newtons. So the acceleration was 7.13. It has to be in between 0 and 9.8 because there's no other external forces acting on it. So gravity is as big as it could have been. And then tension becomes 21.4 newtons. Now, there are simplified equations that you'll find in textbooks that allow you to solve for Atwood's machines or half Atwood's machines with one unified equation. But what I like to do is try to solve it knowing, knowing what we already know how to do, which is draw free body diagrams. Each object gets its own free body diagram. And then we combine the equations um, using the substitution method. But of course, there's other ways to solve this. But for me, this is the most direct 
and will apply to any different situation that we're faced with. It doesn't have to just be a half atwood. It could be any problem with a pulley, maybe with an inclined plane or something like that as we move forward. But for right now, the acceleration 7.13 for this half atwood and the tension is 21.4 newtons. All right, let's solve for a half Atwood's machine now with some friction. And what we're going to have here is a piece of wood sliding on a wooden table. So we're going to have to look at our reference table to find the coefficient of friction. And wood on wood has 0.3 for kinetic and 0.42 for static. And I'm going to write 0.3 for mu because this is going to be moving. What we're going to try to do is find the acceleration and the tension in the rope again but now we have friction involved. And what I'm going to do is draw a free body diagram up top for my four kilogram mass, which will involve gravity. I'll write a better F. There's a better F. We have the tension in the rope. Now we have friction and we have the normal force because it's resting on a surface. On the other hand, we have the 10 kilogram mass and that's going to have gravity pulling down and the normal force, not the normal force, the tension pulling up. Not on a surface. So the tension in the rope is what's opposing its motion. If there were no rope and then we just cut the rope, then the 10 kilogram mass would fall with an acceleration of negative 9.8 meters per second squared. But the rope is actually slowing it down. The wood itself is acting as, uh, as an impedance to this block in the first place. And then we have the wooden table also slowing it down because of friction. Now our first step, as always, is to figure out the force due to gravity. And I'm going to do 10 times 9.8 first, which I don't know why I used my calculator, but you have 98 newtons here. And you have 4 times 9.8. And you have 39.2 newtons. If this were an assessment, you'd want to show your work for that. The normal force is 39.2 here. No other force is involved. And let's find friction, which is mu Fn 0 0.3 times 39.2 newtons. So answer still in the calculator, times 0 0.3. You have 11.76 newtons is friction. So friction, 11.76 newtons. All right, we have all the forces we know labeled. And I'll start with, we have two blocks, we'll call it A and B again. I'm going to start with equation B first because it has less forces. We have 98 newtons moving downward, which is our positive direction. We'll define the problem as moving clockwise as positive. Minus the tension equals MA. So 98 minus T equals 10 kilograms times A, and that's 98 newtons. Equation A is going to look like this. T moving to the right in the direction of motion. Let me just, that's our final equation. T minus friction equals MA. T minus 11.76 newtons equals 4 kilograms times A. So we have our two equations. Okay, we have 98. Let's try to simplify over here. 98 minus T equals 10A, and T minus 11.76 equals 4A. Now, they're both equally as complex, so what I'll do is I will solve for T on the first one. So I'm going to get the 98 by itself, so it's 98 minus 10A equals T. I'm bringing the T over and the 10A on the other side. And then I'm going to plug it in to the second equation. So 98 minus 10A, that's all this term here, minus 11.76 equals 4A. And it looks like we only have one unknown, which is A. I'm going to add the 10 onto the other side, so I'll get 14A over here. And then I'm going to combine the 98 minus the 11.76, and I have 82, I'm sorry, 
equals 14a. Divided by 14, and I get 6.16 for the acceleration. Now I plug that number back into one of the equations. Why don't I just do um, this one? Because it's t equals 4a plus 11.76. So 4 times answer. And then I add 11.76 and I get 36.4 newtons. So the tension's 36.4 and the acceleration is 6.16 meters per second squared. Looks confusing, a lot of different things going on, but what you need to realize is we started with free body diagrams, found gravity, made an equation in the direction of motion. We had to ensure that the positive direction was clockwise, negative direction was counterclockwise, and then we had two equations, two unknowns, and we solved for each. This is complex, but if we break it into smaller chunks and smaller pieces, it becomes much more manageable.